There are so many misconceptions and assumptions that people make mistakenly about what a cybersecurity career looks like and what the industry is actually made up of. And today I'm gonna to be talking about five misconceptions that I feel a lot of people have around cybersecurity and cybersecurity industry. Today on Simply Cyber, coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cyber security career further, faster. I'm your host, Jerry Osier, and every Monday I drop video around cyber security and how you can improve yourself. Be sure to check the rest of the videos as I've got a ton of them, and they're all very similar in kind of the approach, delivery, etc. cetera. Um, be sure to stay tuned to the end for my one cool thing segment where I'm gonna be dropping a, a DFIR, a uh, really, really cool use case uh, simulation thing. And, uh, but first today we're gonna be talking about five misconceptions that a lot of people have about cybersecurity in the industry, especially if you're not already in the industry. So if you're looking to come in, you could easily have uh, some misconceptions. Also, before we get started, I do wanna shout out, I've been throwing up different um, YouTube uh, channels that I, I watch personally and promote and like. And, like. Um, and this week we've got Hack 5's Threat Wire, which is Shannon Morris's group. There she is right there. Uh, she does an excellent job. I'll put a link to her show uh, down below. We're not affiliated at all. It's just, I would like you to know about it. So check it out. Um, so anyways, back to today's content. Five misconceptions. Number one, and this one I get all the time, especially when I'm interviewing um, you know, recent college graduates or even interns for an intern program, and I ask them, why do you wanna get into cybersecurity? And 98% of them say because they wanna be a hacker or they like red teams. So the number one misconception is that cybersecurity equals you're an elite you know, movie style, swordfish, uh, war games type hacker. That is not true at all. So. Yes, there is a um, job in the field or a skill set in the field called pen testing, ethical hacking, red teaming. Uh, those are all around the same thing. And that's really the offensive side of the house, the offensive security. And you're basically, you know, trained and skilled and good at breaking into things, breaking into systems, breaking into buildings, uh, compromising people through social engineering. It's really cool. You get to like basically pretend to be a criminal. And the whole point of this job is that you can be a good guy, find the uh, holes in the defenses, and then help them patch it before an actual threat actor exploits them. But within the field, this is only a small portion of it. There is so many other opportunities what, you know, I have tons of different videos, right? So check out the one on malware analyst or SOC analyst. I'll, I'll, I'll link um, with a little channel tag up here. But like you can be on the defensive side. You could be a digital forensics expert where you just get dead disks and you analyze them. You don't really talk to people. Um, you could work in like work with legal on the compliance side. You could work in privacy. Like there is so much um, interesting different jobs that are not the hacker uh, per se. Um, that, you know, it's really a, a misconception. I, I really think it's because Hollywood and the media sensationalizes that particular role because it's the most interesting to like sensationalize um, in a movie and stuff like that because you basically are acting like a magician to like make things pop open. So just know that there's a huge field. I'm actually gonna put a picture right here. Um, Naomi Buckwalter uh, from LinkedIn, she actually had this really great graphic of um, all the different kinds of jobs and areas within information security and IT that kind of overlap. And uh, it, it'll give you, if you just pause the video and take a look, it'll really give you a uh, perspective on just the sheer volume of what type of opportunity. So, you know, if being a, a hacker doesn't interest you, don't think that cybersecurity isn't for you. There's so much more. Number two misconception that hackers and cybersecurity people, they're very solo, they're, you know, head down, don't talk to me, uh, introverted, antisocial. It can't be, I mean, sure, there's people like that, but in every industry, there's people like that. Really, cybersecurity has a very healthy and a very vibrant um, community that supports itself. There is some toxicity within the community, but it's easy enough to avoid that. And um, I mean, I regularly engage with all sorts of different professionals who are interested in helping you stand up for yourself and uh, get access to the skills and resources. I mean, hell, even this channel itself is designed for that purpose. Um, and all you gotta do is, you know, say hi, you know, uh, walk up to someone at a conference, talk to a speaker, volunteer. Um, it's really a great community and it's becoming more and more inclusive. Um, 
you know, in general, the last like five or six years. So like, I'm really, really, really proud to be part of the cybersecurity community. And just want you to know that there's a, um, there's a great group of people who are in here and it's not solo only uh, much again, like they do in the Hollywood movies where it's like the one super hacker who was able to do everything and doesn't need any help from anyone. That's far. It couldn't even be further from the truth. And even on the, on the, on the threat actor side, the skills are getting so deep and so, specific that a lot of the cyber organizations have actually like um, broken up into like expertise. So like this cyber threat actor group is really good at like getting access, like getting usernames and passwords that are actually successful and can break. And then they'll give them to another group who's really good at dropping malware, has really good malware that can do X, Y, Z. And then another group who's good at managing like the ransomware incident. Now, this is all criminal activity. I'm not suggesting or promoting it, but I just want you to know, like even on the bad guy side, they're organized and have a community. So it's it's very inclusive and uh, one that, you know, I hope if you're looking to get into it, that you also are met with the same level of inclusion um, that, that the community has, has uh, given me and makes available to others. Now on to our third misconception. Oh my gosh. So this one just came up the other day. My third misconception in cybersecurity is that Macs or, you know, Apple, Apple tens, MacBooks, whatever you want to call it, that they don't get viruses. This, this couldn't be further from the truth. So Windows machines make up the vast majority of the corporate population of endpoints in the world. Okay. So if you think about it for a second, it is in the best interest, especially governments use Windows, it's in the best interest of threat actors to spend their time developing weapons that work on the largest potential attack surface, right? So if I make one weapon and I can use it again and again and again across all these different victims, all these different targets, all these different adversaries, whatever you want to call them, that's really great return on investment. If, if the Mac only has this much of a slice and I spend all the same amount of time investing in developing a weapon or a capability, and it only works on a fraction of it, like the return on investment isn't good. So it's not that Macs are virus free, or, it, it's, or that they can't have viruses written for them, it's because the, the amount of people spending time and effort and research to develop those viruses is smaller. Now, I wanna point out that uh, Patrick Wardle, who's like the go-to guy uh, expert, as far as I'm concerned, on Apple security, uh, over to Objective C, and I'll, I'll link to his um, website here. But he uh, has uh, cataloged all the different Mac malware that he has found. I mean, there's a lot of it. Fruitfly, he gave a talk at DEF CON, like 21 maybe, uh, on Fruitfly. I'll link to the talk he gave in the show notes. But this is like a more complicated, almost APT level malware where um, it had a command and control that would just take commands and it could either do screenshots, turn on the um, the webcam, the audio, it could delete files, uh, add files, uh, copy files. It could even uh, interface, like it could move the mouse to a certain point and click, like it had that capability, very advanced stuff. Um, and he was able to actually, it's really cool. He gave a talk at DEF CON 23, I think, or 22, uh, where he actually did further analysis and reversed that and weaponized it um, in a different way that was kind of clever. So anyways, the point is, Macs are just as susceptible uh, to malware as Windows, it's just that there's less malware in the ecosystem, if you will, to attack Apple computers. But don't think that they're in invulnerable, right? By any means, because I, I, I've heard some people say, "Oh, Macs don't get viruses," or there is no Mac malware and stuff like that. And it couldn't be uh, further from the truth. So just just be aware of that. And also, there's uh, opportunity there if you wanted to become the next Patrick Wardle and really specialize in um, Mac Apple malware. Now. On to our fourth misconception. The fourth misconception of cybersecurity, and, and this happens a lot by people who are not in uh, the field or people who are interfacing with cybersecurity professionals. They make the mistake that they think IT and cybersecurity are the same. I get, I get referenced all the time. I work in information security, right? Like, oh, we have Jerry from IT. Oh, like, Jerry, like IT is represented, Jerry's on the call. Like, yeah, I have a computer science background. Yes, I understand technology. And to be a really good cybersecurity professional, you do have to understand technology. But I don't work in IT. IT's objective and mission is performance, like five nine, like availability and performance. So it's working great and it's five nines, right? It's always up. And you have, you know, business continuity, disaster recovery, all that stuff. There is, think of it as a Venn diagram, right? With um, 
security here and IT here. And that intersection, yeah, that's like the business continuity and stuff like that. But I don't care if the machine is not performing excellent, if it takes you an extra three, four, five seconds for the page to load, that, that's not my concern. My concern is that only the people who are supposed to be using the system are using it, only, and when the system wants to be used by those people that it's available and the data that they're looking at has integrity, right? So like what they're looking at is what it should be. That's what I care about. The fifth misconception is that you need to know how to program to be a cybersecurity professional. This is not true. Just knowing how to program help? Yes, it does, right? If you're, if you're a pen tester or a blue team person and you're using a tool that's open source and it's not working exactly the way you want it, you can basically pop the hood and take a look at the code, maybe make some tweaks and make it work, right? Um, but you don't need to know how to program. You don't need to be a mechanic in order to drive a car, but if the car starts tinkering around, if you're a mechanic, you know how to pop it open and work it, right? So it's a misconception that you have to know how to program and, and it's important because you do need to understand, in my opinion, uh, some networking concepts and some operating system kind of file system type stuff concepts, but programming is a nice to have, not a need to have. Um, so, you know, just, just be aware of that in case you were like, if that was like an impediment that, or barrier for you thinking, I can't get programming, cybersecurity is not for me. Nothing could be further from the truth. There's definitely an opportunity for you uh, to have a successful, uh, su successful career in cybersecurity and have no idea how to write Hello World in any language, okay? So those are my five misconceptions that people have about cybersecurity. Uh, and now it's time for our one cool thing. This week's one cool thing is a DFIR, Digital Forensics Incident Response Challenge that I came across on LinkedIn, but it's called like the some of the stolen Szechuan uh, sauce cuisine and it's kind of Rick and Morty themed. But this is a really, really cool lab. So like a lot of times you'll, you'll study digital forensics in like a book, uh, but I, I, I'm here to tell you, if you don't practice digital forensic, forensics, you're not gonna be good at digital forensics. You need to work through exercises in order to like understand what's going on and how the tools work, etc. And this lab is awesome. I plan on doing it, I haven't dug in yet, but they've got an entire like scenario set up that's kind of fun, it's based on this Rick and Morty show. And then they've got, um, you know, what interview responses you got from an interview of the users, and then they have like artifacts that you've been able to uncover, indicators of compromise, some network traffic. Um, and then they ask you a series of questions and they actually have it set up for like kind of newbie questions. Like if you're new to digital forensics, like these are some of the questions that you'd wanna be able to answer. And if you're an advanced person, you could still enjoy the challenge because they have more advanced questions for users like that. So it's a really clever, really fun um, DFIR lab that allows you to actually like take the job, take the role for a spin and do it in a fun way. So I wanted to recommend that as just a one cool thing that you could check out uh, and dig into it. So, all right, hopefully uh, you made it this far. I really appreciate it. Uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe if you want to be known, uh, if you want to know every Monday when I post the video um, and keep track of, you know, the content coming out. Love making it, love engaging with y'all. So until next time, stay secure.